and German expertise catched my eye today, where they give safety advices about the dangers of CO2 focusing lenses. So yet another danger that comes with our K40 laser of some sort. Uh, as you know, a CO2 laser is capable of engraving acrylics and glass. Even when it comes to glass, we are more talking about marking, as the laser creates microcracks in the glass surface that look like an engraving. Uh, so glass and other transparent materials are not transparent to the wavelength of this particular sort of laser light. A CO2 laser lens can't obviously be made out of glass. It needs to let through the infrared light. So what do they use to make those lenses? Well, they use zinc selenide, and zinc selenide and sodium selenide are highly toxic chemicals. And this is why we have this orange tint to these, uh, to these laser lenses. Um, they are definitely not made out of glass. Um, to form a ZNSE crystal, you need a complex procedure out of um, high heat and excessive pressure under inert gas. Um, these crystals are then cut down and ground to the specific specs and focal lengths. If you ever have ordered uh, a spare lens, you've probably seen um, the short SN, uh, S, uh, sorry, ZNSE, what stands for zinc selenide. So pretty sure everybody who owns a CO2 laser cutter owns a small piece of this poisonous crystal. I intuitively swapped the lens some months ago as it started to become opaque, not knowing that um, this could potentially cause um, some health issues not only from touching the lens without gloves, but also when working with the machine, as the lens is opaque, it absorbs more of the laser light and becomes warmer and warmer, and as it heats up, um, it may release toxic fumes. Zinc selenide starts decomposing at a temperature um, greater than 400 degrees centigrade, that's about 750 degrees Fahrenheit. It sublimes into zinc and selenium fumes um, that are quite dangerous to breathe in. Already a very low concentration can be harmful under the right circumstances. Well, I, I don't want to f create fear, um, but I think it is good to know what we are dealing with and uh, give you an idea how toxic these lenses uh, can be when overheat or even break. I crudely translated the safety sheet uh, with Google Translate and I want to read out some of the safety precautions you should take when uh, handling these lenses. Now, under normal conditions, those lenses are not very dangerous, but there are indicators that um, this lens may become dangerous in the future. Indicators are deterioration of the cutting result. I mean, when your laser gets weaker and weaker, uh, it could be a problem with your lens. It could become opaque and start to heat up. So you probably want to check it. Uh, emission of whitish or reddish dust in the area of the cutting head or of the laser unit. So when there is any sort of uh, residue or powder inside of your laser bed, it could come from your uh, laser lens. At this point, I would recommend to put on a mask and gloves before um, taking apart your laser head. Uh, lens fragments in the cutting head or in the beam guide, well, that seems to be logic. Uh, powdery deposits uh, in the colors white, gray and red. As I said, when uh, one of these uh, mysterious powders occur in your laser bed, uh, you want to put on a mask because it might mean that your la laser lens has shattered. Um, thermal decomposition creates smoke from selenium and zinc oxides. Uh, because the smoke on cold surfaces near the evaporation are separated, there is only a risk from inhaling the smoke in immediate temporal and spatial uh, proximity to the incident. So when you turn off the laser, the smoke or fumes should stop, but still uh, when the lens shatters, um, it will create dust, which is another issue, and the dust is highly toxic as well. On the other hand, one uh, milligram per uh, cubic meter um, can be or will be ha harmful to your health. Also, uh, it is suspected to be uh, cancerous. And um, the coating of the lenses <laughs> can contain thorium fluoride. Thorium fluoride um, is a radioactive element. Uh, radiation exposure that lies usually below limits of radiation protection and regulations. Well, um, but good to know that um, <laughs> there is not only one uh, <laughs> dangerous chemical involved, but uh, multiple things. Protective measurements um, or protective measures. Uh, when there is an unpleasant smell or unusual interference noise, uh, switch off the machine by the emergency stop. I mean, that's pretty logic as well. Leave the area close to the machine 
uh, area of approximately 10 to 20 meters. That's like 50 to 60 feet in the radius of the machine. <laughs> and uh, wait at least 30 minutes until the reaction has subsided. So uh, ensure good ventilation of uh, the area close to the machine, which is logic as well. Uh, when approaching the machine again, uh, watch out for odors. Remove the lens fragments, clean the beam guide and cutting head with a damp cloth and remove all powdery deposits. I mean, a damp cloth might be the best thing to, you know, avoid from releasing any more uh, dust. Uh, always wear protective gloves and a filter mask when cleaning. Uh, dusk mask uh, FFP3. I don't know if this is a European um, uh, norm thing or a US one. Uh, all lens parts, as well as the cleaning cloth with powder residues and damaged protective equipment should be collected in a plastic bag. The bag must be sealed airtight after the work is completed. The bag must then uh, be disposed properly. So um, you see, it is, um, it is not a big thing when something like this happens, but it is, it is a thing. <laughs> it is not that uh, you could just, you know, um, do this with your fingers and just, you know, get rid of it and, and put in a new one because it is quite toxic. Um, well, this already rounds it up for this video. It was pretty short, but as I could not find um, this um, expertise in English, I thought it might be interesting to make it a short video just to give you the idea that those lenses can be potentially dangerous. I hope you enjoyed this short video. Um, if you like, uh, yeah, like and subscribe, um, ring this little bell, and uh, I see you in the next one. Until then, see ya!